Hey, how y'all doing? It's Josh from Keep It Techie, and today I wanted to do a video on SSH. Uh, SSH stands for Secure Shell. It's a program built into all Linux distributions, um, and it allows for remote administration of uh, your computer, whatever is installed on uh, servers and all that stuff. So I want to I want to show you guys how to uh, configure it as well as connect to it and some best practices uh, to kind of secure it. Uh, so let's get started. So first off, let me show you guys the configuration of it. Um, and that'll be done on the server. This is a VM, so let me minimize it. Uh, let's open up the server. Okay, so uh, create a username, Josh, and I'm going to assume that you guys have set up Ubuntu server, uh, and you have it up and running, and during the installation, you can install SSH. Okay, so let me show you guys the configuration file, um, and anytime you mess with the configuration files, you want to make sure you make a copy of it, so that's the first thing I'm going to do, so that's sudo copy. Etsy SSH SSH D underscore config. That's the file um, that we're going to be messing with today. And then we're going to make the copy of it SSH and we're going to store it in that same location. Uh, and I'll name it dot ECK for backup. Type in the password. Bam. So now we have a backup of it, uh, so we can start working with the file. And like I said, that's best practice. You want to make copies of the configuration files, so in case you mess something up, you can copy that backup back into place over the uh, the one we modify and restart the server, and it should work. So let's modify it. So sudo um, nano. Let's see SSH SSH D dot underscore config. Press enter. Okay. And really I'm just gonna show you guys the configuration file and what you can do in it. Um, so one of the main things, this is the port. Some people rec recommend changing the port to a different port. Uh, you want to change it to something high. Uh, you can modify it to whatever you want. Just make sure you have to open up the the port in the firewall as well as your router if you want to access it from outside your local network so um, you can change it to whatever you want um, so to show you guys uh, let's go down you can change the login grace period uh, and also this is one big thing you want to look at just to make sure it's uh, that the root login, the root account can't log in uh, via SSH. That's a bad thing. You want to make sure they're not allowed to log in uh, as a root or anybody allowed to. And the good thing about Ubuntu systems, um, whenever you uh, install Ubuntu or any Ubuntu based distributions, uh, the root account by default is disabled. So. Uh, they can't get in if they if they try it. So uh, you want to make sure that RSA authentication is yes and public key authentication. Because that will be the second part of this video. I'm going to show you guys how to set up uh, RSA keys uh, so you can log in without a password. And then also down here is another thing we're going to change. Uh, and this will dis disable uh, passwords. Uh, login so you don't have to I mean you can change this all you have to do is uncomment this and change it to no and that'll disable uh, logins with passwords and that's a good thing once you get your key set up um, your private and public key and you install your public key on the server then you can uh, log in using the key and turn off this uh, password authentication because by, by default, it's set to yes to allow password authentication. 
even though it's commented out. Um, another thing, uh, this is just something you can do on your own. I do it on my personal server. I, I have a banner that I have set up, so when I log in, I like to see a little pretty banner that pops up uh, when I log into my server using SSH. Another thing I recommend um, is creating a, a group. So you want to you can add groups to the configuration file. You can uh, type, what is it, allow uh, groups, I believe, and then specify the group. But you have to make sure that your, uh, that your use, I mean, your user account is added to that group. Because uh, that'll be the only group that'll be allowed to SSH into the server. So if you do this before adding yourself to the group and you try to SSH into it, it's gonna block you. Uh, so you want to make sure you you do that as well. That's that's another best practice. You don't have to, but it's a good thing uh, to uh, that way. If somebody's brute forcing, that'll be another uh, roadblock in their way from from getting into your server. So um, so we're done with that. I'm gonna just close that out. We don't, we're not gonna make any changes to it yet. I just wanted to show you configuration file. So here we go. Um, no, I don't have any changes. Clear. Okay. So now I want to show you guys how SSH works as far as logging into it. So we are going to open up this other VM. Um, and this is a Ubuntu Mate. Uh, and this is what we'll use to uh, SSH into the server. So I already know what the IP address is, but the way you SSH into something is SSH the command and then your user account at the IP address so this is IP address so uh, I know what my username user account is it's Josh it's the same oh and also I want to point out that whenever you log into a SSA server um, if if uh, the account that you have set up on your local machine is the same as what's on the server, if it's the same name, then uh, you don't have to type in the user user account. It'll automatically assume that your user account on your uh, client machine um, is the login, and it will uh, use that use that user. So uh, I know what the IP address is. So you could just type in 192.168.10.119. So the IP address of the server and press enter. And what this does is add it as a, a fingerprint to your client machine. That way you will, uh, that way uh, your computer will always know that uh, it's connected to the correct server. Uh, that way somebody's not doing a, like a man in the middle attack or something like that where you're connecting to the wrong server and giving them the information that it takes to log into your server. So. This fingerprint will be stored, so all you have to do is type in yes. It'll be stored in your system, in your um, SSH uh, known host file. Uh, and I'll show you that location as well, so you can see it. So, just press yes. Uh, and then I'll ask you for your password. And that's basically it. As you can see, it says, welcome to Ubuntu 16.4. Yeah, so that's the server. You know, that's the server. Um, and you can do all your administration stuff as if you were right in front of the computer. So uh, just run a command so I can show you guys. Uh, cool. So and as we you know, that's the host name. I named it Zeus uh, for this server. Just my test server. Uh, so anyway, that's it. So now I want to show you guys how to uh, set up uh, keys. So we're going to exit out of that server. Now we're back on the desktop. Let's clear this out so uh, you won't get confused by seeing this. Um, so it's uh, a built-in program uh, that comes along with SSH uh, client and all that stuff. Uh, it's a program. It's called SSH Keygen, and that's uh, how you create your public and private keys. So just type in SSH dash Keygen. And this will generate your RSA keys. And RSA, it's uh, the uh, RSA 
it really stands after looking it up it really stands for the three designers of the program or the crypto crypto uh cryptographic program um it was three designers and their last names were uh, started with r s a and so that's why they need the r s a in case you wanted to know but um so let's press enter all right and it will start generating your public and private keys uh it will save it in a default location which is home your username uh, .ssh which is it's a hidden folder anything with a dot in front of it is uh, a hidden folder um, and then that will be the name of your uh, private key and your public key will have dot pub on the end of it and that's the key that's what you want to send to the server or put on the server so we'll just hit enter because we want to store it in a default location and then also you can add a passphrase to it so the passphrase will stop anybody that's get that gets access to your computer from um, accessing your keys. If they don't have a password, then they can't get into your key, and they can't use your key or whatever in any uh, sense. So now it's created that that key for you. So now the next step after you created those keys now let's look at them right fast i just want to show you um we can go uh cd um dot, dot ssh um, and as you can see that's the two keys the uh, id is your private key id underscore rsa is your private key and id underscore rsa.pub is the public key and so i just want to show you guys the uh, file so we can we could cat that if you wanna if you wanna see the public key you might ask me to unlock it uh what up yeah that's your private key and then uh, also public key right there okay so what we want to do is push this public key to the server um, and this will authenticate you on the, on the server. So we can use a program that's built in. Uh, let's clear this out. Uh, that program is called sudo, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, ssh copy id. And the way you want to type this command is ssh um, dash copy id. And then you want to put the, the account and the server. And actually we're gonna do it this way. So 192.168.10.119. And that's the server we wanna copy uh, our public key to. So you just press enter at that point and it'll connect to the server and copy that key to it once I type in my password and it will add it. So now we good. So now if I type in SSH uh, 192.168.10.119, it'll log directly in. We don't have to type in the password. And that's the way it'll work from here on out. And um, so now let's uh, exit this. And uh, the manual way of doing this, just so you can see, uh, is basically using that command cat, uh, ssh, and then um, rs, what is it, id underscore rsa dot pub, just cat it out, just so, show your key, and you can basically copy that, and then log SSH into the server. Uh, 10.19. Log into it. And then just go into your directory, your home directory. Uh, let's see. I'll just see the answer which I don't know where I'm at. Um, uh, and it's dot SSH. Um, And 
unauthorized keys. So you want a uh, sudo and uh, uh, you know, just open up the authorized keys folder. And as you can see, it's already there. But you, what you would do is just add it in there. To, you know, and that's why I wanted to show you that's the uh, that's where the key would go. And it's very very long. Um, So now let's go into that configuration file again. So that's uh, sudo. Um, sudo nano etsy um, ssh and then sshd dot underscore config. Uh, and now we want to change that that one selection. I was showing you that password authentication. So you want to uncomment that out. Uh, go in and change this to no, um, and then press uh, Control X to exit, and you want to save that. Cool. And now, anytime you make a change to the configuration file, it won't see that those configuration changes until you restart that service. So you want to go sudo um, system ctl uh, restart ssh. I think it's d.service. Here we go. And press enter. And it'll restart the service. So it'll pick up that new uh, configuration file. So let's uh, clear this out. Exit out from the server. Let me do another clear. Uh, SSH. Uh, 192. 168. In it. As you can see, we can still log in from there because we have authorized keys. And now I'm going to show you if you log in from my from my main box. Um, and let me minimize this so you can see my uh, terminal. Uh, let's minimize the server as well. So you can see it clearly. Uh, let's try to SSH into it. So SSH 192.168. 119 uh, press enter and it'll say uh, permission denied and that's because uh, we don't have a key on there and it doesn't allow password authentication now that we made that change in the configuration which is a good thing to do uh, especially if your uh, server is uh, going to be publicly accessed from the web you want to make sure uh, it's, con it's controlled so um i hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching if you like it please give a thumbs up and also share it with your friends uh if you leave a comment um with questions i'm more than happy to uh, answer i'm gonna keep dropping new content as much as i can um, so uh, please please follow subscribe you know do all that good stuff you know if you're a g like me and of course, keep it tech.